well, I'm a really shitty photographer. <laughs> I'm terrible. I mean, look, I was running around the house like a chicken with my head chopped off going, oh my God, I've, my, you know, my, my favourite lens is missing. And I'd been looking at it for days and just thinking it was another lens. I didn't even recognise it. And, I, and it was my favourite lens that I've used for years. So, you know, uh, equipment's just like be totally beyond me. So I, that's why I could never kind of get a smart ass about it. It's just like every day, so it's, it's just, you know, it's humiliating. Tu ia te rangi i tū nei, i tū ia te papa i tā koto nei, kā rango te pō, kā rango te ao, tihe Māori ora. Photography is a very Don Quixote kind of thing, because it is, it's like, t it is taking on the universe, it is tilting at windmills, because you're dealing with time. And you have to take a photograph, you have to decide when to shoot, and like, I mean, time's immense, and so how do you know when to do it? Some people find that difficult, I don't, because there's a freedom in it. I see it just as freedom, not as restriction or pressure. Yeah, that's it, that's it there. That's really good, that looks more relaxed. Yeah, let's have a look at see if that catches. Fiona has, throughout her entire career, been right at the kind of the forefront, I think, of many of the, the major shifts in New Zealand uh, contemporary photography, which has really kind of kept her practice in everyone's mind and everyone's sight for a long time. Uh, when she first was at Elam Art School and training to be a photographer, she became so seduced with the dark room and this idea of the analogue photograph. I was very lucky to get into the art school, I think. We just tried everything in the first year and I just loved photography the minute I got in there. It was documentary, They're like, you know, very clean, take lots of photographs, you know, hose the situation down. And in those days, um, you could be quite um, confrontational as a photographer. It was much less political, so you could get right into people's faces. And... But I just didn't have the nature for that. It was just terrifying. Uh, because I'm kind of a, I'm quite socially phobic, and I always was. And in a sense, um, photography was great because it released me or it gave me some... I could get out into society with a camera in front of me. And then in the end, I had the photographs. They were, you know, they were doing it for me. Oh, she was like nothing anyone in this country had seen. It was dramatic, it was intense. Uh, and right from the beginning, she was exploring ways of translating photography into something even more intense and more powerful. There were people like Dwayne Michaels in America who were working much more um, emotionally and working on their own kind of personal scripts and, and their own um, you know, imaginings and setting up photographs and lighting it their own way and like little theatres, I suppose. And kind of get the angry man thing going on. It's just quite a simple thing. It's me photographing my kids. <laughs> it's just a bit of an indulgence, really. A lot of her early subjects were her whānau. And as she became more comfortable with her Māori, her kaitahu identity, she became more interested in the way that related to whakapapa and the way that related to tikanga and the way that related to that spiritual dimension. Grandma Furley. She used to take us in the holidays, my brother and I, to the museum. It was beautiful, quiet, smelt really nice. I loved the Egyptian section, I loved all the ponamu. Um, I had no idea why I loved it, but I loved it. And it, it was very cool and spooky when we found out why we loved it so much. When, you know, it was just like hitting the, the jackpot that came from, you know, whakapapa that were, was the ponamu whakapapa. So that was just like magic. Fiona started going into museums and photographing Tonga directly. And in a way, I think it kind of parallels how museums looked at Tonga for many years. And for a long time, they were sort of treated as dead artifacts in a display case. 
When she went into those, those collections, she, she's on her tour on the YY. This is, this is, um, this is her whakapapa. This is her uh, essence drawing out of these things, seeing their energy and reinvesting them uh, in, a, in a symbolic and a visual way with, with their mana, their rightful mana. And the, as, as the process of museums has changed to reflect a greater understanding and respect for that role of kaitiangi. Yeah, it's impossible to overstate the importance of the head to Māori. And chiefs, every tiny hair on the head was a powerful spiritual conductor to, you know, to the gods. So it's even kind of hard for me to comprehend how powerful that idea of the head is. It's about the identity. We look at each other's heads. We are, in a sense, our heads. And the rest of us is just something that is around the head. A picture of an ancestor is tonga because it contains part of their essence. And that was a springboard for looking at lots of different things in a new way and, and how to reflect that level of spirit in a photographic image. Wow, it's so beautiful. Pretty dull. Mm. Oh yeah, he looks really cocky, I like him. Actually, maybe her, because she's got a small beak, but she's got a very pretty shape, body shape, yes. Yeah, she's beautiful. Uh, having to deal with rare and extinct birds, extinct birds is just, that's really hard work. It's miserable, because you have to open up the big metal boxes and then just look at all these dead birds. I think I just continually mourn that. <coughs> may, may I um, just take these little yeah, guys up too, because I'm really fascinated. Oh, that one? Oh yes, he's lovely. Okay. Well, the only time that I'd really seen huia was when you're uh, uh, eating your Christmas pudding and bite on a sixpence and there's the little huia coin. And it just occurred to me once I was considering my subject matter in museums that huia were quite important in the past. They were on stamps and then they, people seemed to forget about them. So I thought, right, this is good. Because I've always been interested in conservation and I was always scandalised by successive governments' lack of interest in, in the most important things that we've got which are our birds and our forests and our waterways. And uh, so I thought, oh, well, maybe it's time for these birds to have an outing. And so that's what I did. Yeah, it's um, that whole idea of light coming from within, that radiance from within. I'm a big Car Caravaggio fan, so uh, his lighting is really, for me, it's just like the best. I think who Fiona's work leaves open a space where any viewer can come and respond and react intuitively, emotionally, sensitively to, to what's inside that image. Um, her photographs are often very personal and they contain you know, objects and meanings and values which um, have, pe have perhaps a very kind of uh, secretive or emotional kind of core to her. But you stand in front of some of her work and suddenly this sentimental kind of effect feeling, suddenly you're feeling things that, you know, you're like, no, I'm not comfortable feeling these things in life or in front of a photograph. And I think her photographs have that ability to uh, make us feel as well as make us think. Flowers really stress me out because they you know, people go, beautiful flowers, and then they throw them away. All I see is these beautiful things dying in my house. So in fact, I'm much more comfortable once they're dead or, <laughs> And you know, that's the, that's the thing with me. All of my still lifes from the very beginning have been all about things, you know, leaves falling, all the stuff that's left over, um, which is really about, about how ephemeral life is and that, you know, death, there's always death in the midst of life there. You know, you can't have one without the other, obviously. And um, so it's all very memento mori. Well, that's one thing that you learn as a photographer is how the uniqueness of every object. Where some people see photography as, you know, like this numb indexicality, 
uh, full of indifference. I kind of see it as an eye that um, provokes you to, uh, to see everything as incredibly precious and unique. The little karakia I do um, is given to me by Rangi Tuno Black. Um, I tuia te rangi i tū nei, i tuia te papa i tā koto nei, kā rango te pō, kā rango te, te ao, tihe Māori ora. So, thank you creatures. Let's see if we can make some art together. Him out.